without, you know, going into too many boring details, can can each of you sort of, you know, piece together like a high level overview of what minor extractable value is? Yeah, I guess high, high level overview of MEV. When blockchains were first designed, we designed them as systems of incentives. The idea being that incentives in the system would drive socially optimal behavior. And the financial incentive in this system originally was designed to be this reward that miners got from producing blocks. So this Bitcoin or whatever it was that the miners got for each block was what was financially incentivizing them to behave in a socially appropriate manner for the chain. One thing we didn't really think of when we were first inventing blockchains was this idea that there could be other value on the table that would be available to miners and that's what we call mev maximal extractable value or minor extractable value to some people it's this value that can ultimately be captured by miners that is being left on the table and is there in addition to the block reward there's a lot of ways that we try and deal there's a lot of consequences both positive and negative potentially that can arise from mev a number of solutions that people are uh, theorizing and developing to try and deal with this phenomenon yeah and i'd say uh, one of uh, yeah in Uniswap's um, situation, one of the uh, primary drivers of uh, MEV, the primary MEV opportunities that we see is uh, sandwich attacks. So these are like when you look at a, a particular Uniswap transaction, often uh, the user provides a, uh, a parameter to their swap that allows for slippage. Um, so if the market shifts uh, and and the time between they brought when they broadcast their transaction and the transaction actually gets mined, um, their transaction could still be valid because like the current market price uh, at some future block uh, is within their slippage parameter. Um, and that actually provides an opportunity for a miner or uh, a searcher in the flashbots case to say to come in and manipulate the market in such a way that it um, is still within like the market has not slipped so much that it's uh, that transaction is no longer valid uh, but the price is worse than when the transaction was initially broadcast so the uh, user our user who uh, broadcast that transaction is getting a worse deal than maybe they anticipated but still a deal that they were technically okay with and the uh, the miner or the searcher can essentially take the margin between this uh, the lower bound uh, on that slippage parameter and the initial market price as uh, their revenue. And, and just to jump in here and double click on something that, that Nathan mentioned, um, at Flashbots, we like to use the term maximal extractable value. It's fine to use minor too, but uh, the reason for that is that in any um, Turing complete smart contract blockchain, you're going to have someone uh, some ability to extract value from transaction ordering. So in ETH1, this is the miner who orders transactions. In ETH2 or other proof of stake systems, this is the validator. So we'll have validator extractable value uh, in, in ETH2, other proof of stake systems. Um, and so like, we're trying to move towards this, this maximal extractable value term. And, and that's why you might hear um, some people use that, some people use minor, but they really get at the same thing when it's just a little bit more expanded. Um, and to bring it back to the earlier question about why we're seeing more discussion about MEV now, uh, I think you can trace this story back to last year when the activity happening on Ethereum um, just blew up exponentially. More and more contracts, more and more activity, more and more money was being made, uh, and we saw increasing amounts of um, opportunities for value to be made by placing transactions in certain places, right? So when um, you had a couple different DEXs on the chain, there are just more opportunities for arbitrage. Uh, and you saw increasing levels of sophistication of traders uh, like Nathan, as well as others that were um, forming relationships with miners to capture this in proprietary closed ways. And so one of the reasons why Flashbots launched is we saw all this activity happening. We saw the, the J curve of value that could be extracted. Uh, and we saw that closed and proprietary systems to extract it were being formed. Um, and there was increasing levels of, levels of sophistication we wanted to turn this into something that was closed and proprietary into an open and transparent system that aligned with the, the broader ethos of, of crypto uh, instead of just something in smoke-filled rooms and, and closed systems, right? The Flashbots released open software that anyone can use, anyone can submit their transactions to our network today um, and specify in a very granular way your transaction ordering preferences. So if you see uh, Will making a giant trade on a DEX here to sell some asset and it makes a huge impact that creates an arbitrage opportunity, using Flashbots you can specify, I want my transaction directly behind Will's. Um, and the miner runs an auction to auction off the top of their block space. Uh, and if you're paying the miner the most, um, your transaction will be mined directly behind Will's, which is 
what you specified. Uh, and this, this level of like granularity unlocks a lot of MEV opportunities that um, previously weren't available before. And I think is, is part of that um, reason why MEV is so large. So just to sum that back up, uh, more interactions on chain, more contracts, more value. Um, initially saw closed and proprietary MEV activity happening. Flashbots released open and permissionless software that anyone can use. And I think all of those things are, are the reasons why we see more emphasis in MEV activity today. Hey, Robert, do you know uh, how much, uh, like what proportion of minor revenue comes from uh, MEV today? Uh, it depends on the day, somewhere between, I think, 5 and 10% of overall revenue.